So let's start by talking about how in Tecla Power Fab 2024i, now you can uh, automatically turn on piece tracking in a job by job basis. Uh, this is, was a highly requested feature by international clients, so I want to mention that. Uh, when you go to maintenance, production control, company standards, uh, there is an option now here to enable piece tracking by default. So every new job after that will be by default having the piece tracking option turned on. So if you are always tracking your parts as a separate item for some different route of the assembly, uh, that will be a good option to have turned on. And have that in mind that you can turn that off or on also in a job by job basis, right? So if, if I have that as my standard, but there is a job that I don't really need to track that, I could always come here to the input settings and turn that off. Um, or turn on in a job in particular as well. So uh, that's that's a very uh, helpful option. The second thing that I want to talk to you is the model net weight in production control, and that's also a very highly requested feature, especially for international projects. Uh, it's uh, people were trying to, to they were catching some differences because sometimes they didn't have all the CNC data or some other reasons. So uh, they wanted to have the model weight in production control. So what we have now here available is that will be being exported from Tecla structures. And you have a, a couple of options uh, to, to use it for, right? You can always include that into the display by including any of these assembly model weight or assembly model weight each in, a, in for assemblies where you have more than one, it will be also breaking that down in, in, in individual assemblies or also by part as well. Now, it's not just a field that you will be able to display for. Uh, when you go to reports, there is an option now under the weight type to not just report by net weight and gross weight as before. Now you can also uh, in, use the model weight for your reports as well. Now, the next thing to mention, it is uh, the definition of shop users. And that's basically when you go to piece tracking, uh, the, the screen was displaying all the users that you had under administration and maintenance. Uh, so now when you create a new user, for example, here, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, say this is my shop one user, just as an example. And this is uh, John Smith. If this is someone that is actually actively working in, 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 in my projects in the shop, I can check, keep this box checked as a production employee, and then he will be enabled to, to, to be displaying that uh, pool of options in the dropdown. If I uncheck this box, then John Smith will not be an option to be selected when I am doing piece tracking for welding or anything like it. So that's a, a good option as well to reduce the amount of, of you know, users that you have display, especially in PowerFab Go, it will be a very powerful, helpful thing. Uh, the next one to show here, it will be the production control finish translation and mapping. And what we mean by that is it happens uh, sometimes that when you are importing from uh, your detailer, the finish, it won't be any of the finishes that you have here under uh, finish maintenance in, in production control. Uh, so what the options that you have right now is you can create a mapping as well, right? So instead of creating the translation every single time that you are importing, I can just come here by default and, and create the options that I usually see. I can go and say, they sometimes call it Gulf, they sometimes call it uh, uh, Galvanize, they some, oops, I say we have, it's uh, Galvanize, they sometimes call it Sync, uh, anything that is related to a galvanizing finish, I can save those and then Tecla PowerFab will identify those in the import and then we'll just map it to the galvanize. And if you, there is a new one that you didn't did a new by default when importing, you can just select that, how, how it translates to the one that you wanted and then it will be stored in here as well. Uh, the other option that I wanted to show you is the job search bar in the different modules. Now, this will be a very helpful thing, especially because we go through different shops and they sometimes, the people know the projects, not really by the job number, but by the description. Uh, so it will be very easy for them now here to go and say, oh, you know what? I'm uh, actually looking for the restaurant that we are assembling right now. And then it will be looking at the, it will be searching in the different fields. Now, which fields will be using for the search? As you can see here, I have the option for all. 
uh, but it's job description, job number, and location. That's only because those are the fields that I have included in here that are available. Uh, if I just go to customize my grid here, uh, just for the purpose of this, I'm gonna go ahead and include a lot of this, a lot of them just to, so I can display to you and, and show you all the fields that are available for searching results. Let me just include all of them. There we go, apply my, that into my layout. Now that will be a, a huge set of data, but just so I can show you all the fields that are available in here. Let me uh, set fit to, to out to fit that to the columns. There we go. Uh, so as you can see in production control, we have the option to search by the job description, job number, the sold to and ship to, the location, the group numbers, uh, one and two, and the comments that you put in there, even the shipping comments into into this. Now you can obviously, if, if you want your people to get familiar with something like, uh, you know what, we always search by the job description, that, that can be the default, right? But if you say all, and, and I go and say I still have in mind that this also not looking just at the job description, but also at the, at the group that I'm using and, and all of those fields that are included in there. So it, it can be a really helpful option for you to easily identify the and, and find the jobs. Especially, you know, imagine historically uh, one more scenario in estimating, right? Like if I wanna go and find out I remember that we work in a university a while ago. I can just go and type a few characters. Uh, and sorry, let me see if I have that all. Yep. So if I go and uh, try to find, uh, let's see, a college, I can go and start see finding what this is about, what type of project. If I if I want to find the restaurant that we were working before on, uh, I can very easily find those as well. So. Uh, again, it's just an easy way to identify those. It's also available in purchasing and requisitions. Uh, so here, obviously the options are different, but as you can see, it's still helpful. If I go and say 040, then it filters down the information. So it's very, very easy now to, to localize those in, in any screen. Uh, and the last thing that I wanted to mention, and I think it's very important because it relates to what Ian was presenting about uh, work packages in a way, is that uh, in company information, users have always selected what was the default based on their user. Now they can go and, for example, say, oh, Dance Shop is actually related to Atlanta Shop, save that, and Lopez Shop is actually related to my Minneapolis Shop, and save that. So now users that, are, that have Lopez Shop as their default, when they create work packages, they will always be by default selecting the Minneapolis shop. And they can change if they want to, but again, that's, that's just trying to save some steps to the process of this. Uh, I think that will be all I have to present and I'll pass it over to you, Ryan.